Cold to the touch. once again hey! good morning or i i don't know it feels like morning always but it's not really but... yeah it's not really morning but yeah. cactus time motherfuckers it's actually a pretty cool t-shirt i gotta, yeah, I gotta like admit and, and my hat suits it perfectly because it's also like similar color so i'm like mexican now i actually have a sombrero do you have tequila as well um Wait. Could Ox actually end up being a good uh, <laughs> podcast that way. Hey. Okay. No, we don't have tequila. All right, well, I have that, so. You have tequila. Well, I have whiskey rum. I have rum. always tequila. I, we have Lonkera, uh, whiskey, um, Jalovina, Jalovan. It's Finnish white wine. <laughs> that was a very it. fancy way to put it. <laughs> Yeah, because because for me tequila is uh, same for that uh, whiskey is for some some people or wine. Uh, I I have different kinds of, uh, of so, tequila. So so te tequila for you is like what whiskey is for some other people. So a way to get wasted. Uh, yeah, that also. <laughs> um, <laughs> spe speaking of alcohol and gambling together, by the way, is a very fucking bad idea. <laughs> 
<laughs> so <laughs> perfect start. <laughs> so we can start with recommending different types of alcohol and then move on to betting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which kind of alcohol you like? Well, if I'm betting, I prefer the strong stuff. So uh, preferably <laughs> something like vodka or which. This fucking broadcast right about now. We, we were lucky we don't have any viewers yet, I hope. So, obviously I'm joking. And uh, be responsible, don't drink. Maybe gamble, but not the two combined. Yeah. If, if you drink, drink. If you gamble, gamble. But don't do those things together. It's a very fucking bad idea. If you're at an esports event, you should have a beer and gamble and watch the games though. I recommend it. But having one beer is different than having ten. Yeah, that's what an alcoholic says. <laughs> what the fuck? Man? It's just one beer, you know. I mean, it might be Monday morning, but I mean, it's just a couple of beers. It's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's an example. I didn't mean that it's fucking Monday today, you buffoon. <laughs> Oh, so this uh, yes. starts well, uh, as always. Uh, so, so basically we continue where we left our weekly meeting yesterday. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think that weekly meeting got to all of our brains, actually. <laughs> so we went... <laughs> oh, so... <clears throat> yes. This going to be fun. Like, yeah. Um... I'm not sure about fun, but it's it's going to be <laughs> fun for us. I don't know about the viewers or our bosses or. <coughs> well, uh, your boss is, is is enjoying, so it's okay. Yeah. We have a boss. Mm hmm. Yes. Oh shit. All right. Okay. I I will be the serious one then. Uh, yesterday <laughs> that's we very, talked about a lot of CS:GO. Yeah, I know, right. So, a lot of CSGO yesterday. Uh, shall we begin? Because I, I actually don't even want to do this because I was kind of wrong on everything, so... <laughs> Sad. I love the fact that you start with, I'm go I want to be the serious guy here, and then you continue with, I don't actually want to do this because I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> Or kind of wrong. Uh, I had one win, and then I will have a lot of excuses for the, my uh, wrong prediction. Uh, Shall uh, we get to it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. The first game of yesterday was OG Fnatic. Uh, fair to say, this ended in an interesting way, and it's money was not fucking made, son. Oh really? Rich mm. boy. All right, that's good. Uh, no, but honestly, I think this, uh, of course, we all gave OG a chance to win this, but I definitely didn't favor them. Uh, <laughs> you but, didn't give uh, them a chance to win this, come on. You said they might get a map. Most likely, yeah. I mean, I still think like three times the money or whatever it was is uh, kind of uh, underwhelming. Yeah, you know? true. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, either way, uh, like I'm not gonna <laughs> make up a million excuses here. Of course, I had Fnatic favored, and uh, we, uh, we Fnatic all did. The we, first we, map. Yeah. Well, we all but did. But this yeah. is interesting. So, OG, I don't know how they do it, but they keep on losing their own map pick, and then they turn <laughs> games around. So it's quite interesting because Inferno has been the strongest map lately, yeah. and they lost 16-12. Uh, but then they came back and won overtime on Mirage, and then they closed it out on Dust 2, 16-13. I think uh, OG is a really, really strong Dust 2 team. They have shown that, so I think Dust 2 and Inferno seems to be their strongest maps, even though you know they lost Inferno here, but their track record is really good. Uh, I think and it was they are kind of also... Is yeah. OG is also really good at train, right? Uh, yeah. It's probably a pretty good map for them. I'm not sure how good. Uh, let me check something because I, <clears throat> sure. because as as we promised today, we're gonna talk a lot about um, uh, things about betting perspective and and kind of esports betting combined with this, and 
so if we want to have kind of the betting perspective on this matter, um, I think it's safe to... Um, OG is a pretty good pick uh, when it comes to speaking from betting perspective because <clears throat> they are so volatile. They, they are not the number one team, not even close, but it seems like they can challenge these big guns. So when it comes to then comparing the odds, when you look at the odds before the games and when you want to do betting, I think OG is a really hard team to bet on or bet with because it seems that the odds are quite underwhelming <clears throat> and yet still because you want to believe on the underdog because obviously betting on underdog is it, it can be beneficial in the long run if the underdog wins but the odds aren't big enough for OG uh, to actually take kind of the underdog bets so how would you approach something like this? Well, I, I think it's a very good question. It's obviously quite a tough one as well. But uh, I think, you know, as for an example, we talked yesterday about this game and I felt personally like three times the money on OG was about the right spot. Uh, I think, you know, they have shown that they can challenge everybody, but they still quite rarely uh, seem to win a series against the top dogs. They had a few wins early on, but Again, I'm pretty certain we can already we can state that as a fact that some of the top teams performed worse than they should early on, and now they actually started, you know, reaching their full potential, right? So I think OG they are super hard to judge for that reason, but they have one incredible strength. They don't seem to be bad on any maps. They also seem to do a lot of very <laughs> very good work in uh, terms of uh, preparing for their opponents because. I, I really think this is just the truth. They don't have the firepower of the top teams. I still don't believe they do, but they do a really, really good job against, you know, or preparing for them. And this seemed to be an example of it. Uh, to be fair, this series was super, super close. It could have ended 2-0 Fnatic, I think. It also, on Dust 2, OG had a really big lead, but then Fnatic were grinding their way back, and then there was a few mistakes from their side. But uh, getting back to the betting thing, right? Uh, obviously, it's really, really hard to put a fact out there. Like, this is where one rule applies and this is where it applies because it's a lot of factors, it's a lot of feeling involved. But I think at this point, if you have OG as the example, I think if you get more than three times the money when they play any team actually in the world at this point, it's good because they show that they can challenge but it's still rare that they close the series out. I would never favor OG against the top teams in yeah. the world right now. Uh, with that said, you know, the question is, is it worth playing on 2.5? Mm, I don't think so. Somebody else might think it is, but I really think you have to look at it from a perspective of, so if they would win 50% of the time, then two is fine, right? That's break even. I don't think OG is close to that yet. Looking at their track record, looking at ev all the everything I have, at least in my head, doesn't suggest that. And I think three is the sweet spot for OG as of right now. And I also want to add here, and this is something I you know, was thinking about this morning because I knew this topic is coming up, and it's that sometimes you have to understand that even though OG won this game, it doesn't mean that the bet is amazing. And sometimes, likewise, a lo losing bet is not bad always, you know? If, for an example, <coughs> if you got, uh, let's say, if somebody gave me 10 times the money on Fnatic in this series, of course it's a good bet. You know, of course, 100%. But they still lost. So you can't always take the fact of that they won, therefore it's good, or they lost, therefore it's bad. Yep. You can't really look at it like that. And I think in this case, maybe both me and Mika maybe I, i'm not saying this even as a fact right now maybe we underestimated og but at the same time you have to look at it at three times the money on a winner is it's, it's not a super huge underdog you know they need to win quite often for you to actually earn money on that bet right yep. uh <laughs> then uh, i don't know how to continue that but it's just really important to understand that a winning bet is not factually a good bet same as a losing bet is not factually a bad bet. All you know, that's not how you can't look at it like that, right? I, I think that's actually a really, really, really good aspect to bring up because yeah. a lot of times, um, uh, well, obviously, a big part of it is probably trolling. 
um, this, oh my god, you're fucking shit, you're always losing and I'm losing money because I bet on you, blah blah blah, but that means that the peop if people actually think like that, it means that their entire mentality towards betting is completely wrong. Because you can't, you can't let your emotions drive anything when you're betting. You should never bet on your own. For example, if you cheer for a certain team, like you're a fan of a team. Like for example, um, in, in ice hockey, I've been a fan of Jokerit since I was three years old. So that's almost 26 years now. I don't bet on Jokerit games because I can never be objective. I all, because in my heart, my team will always win, right? And that means that if, if Jokerit plays 62 games during regular season, I'm betting 62 times that Jokerit will win. The reality on how many games they will win is barely half, but it, it's because it's stu but it's stupid because I cannot look at it objectively. There is no way that I can feel like, okay, this is actually a good bet. Therefore, if I'm betting, I bet on, on games and teams that I'm not following because there's no emotions guiding my judgment. Yeah, I, I, I have the same with the Fnatic League of Legends team. I, I never bet on them uh, because uh, actually it's, it's different for me because I I know I, I, I have to let uh, the feelings out and emotions out from that. And that's why I like, it clouds <laughs> my judgment because I, uh, I want to be over uh, like objective about things and and, and like i i uh undervalue the the team i follow because I'm, okay i i don't want my emotions to to be part of this bet so okay are they as good as i think they are probably not so i undervalue them and and that that is also bad for for uh betting side of things because i I overvalue their opponent. I think, okay, they will, uh, okay, they will disappoint me again, and 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 so I I bet on their opponents if even if a fanatic is uh, is big favorite to go in the in the game because I okay they have uh, disappointed me in the past and they will disappoint me again, and and that's uh, as bad uh, as, uh, like in betting uh, kind of view uh, than overvaluing to your own team. But that's the thing, right? If you have kind of an emotional connection to a team, of course I do too, like, uh, obviously, but I'm trying to as much as I can to leave those out. And uh, yeah. the problem is that when you, let's say you favor a team and you watch them a lot, for an example, you know that they lost three games in a row. You have probably a feeling of, but they lost because of this. They lost because of that. There's a feeling attached to, <coughs> you know, there was a reason. You have an excuse. Oh, they will fix it now. It will be better this time. But for the other team that you don't give a shit about, you probably look, oh, they lost three in a games, uh, three games in a row. They suck. You know, you mm, don't yeah. give them excuses. And at the yeah. same time, you can always, you know, you make stuff up in your head that confirms things that are actually not true. Yeah. Uh, also want to add about just to like confirm the point about uh, odds not being always depending on the result. Uh, it, it's not a good or bad bet. Uh, for an example, right, if we take... Um, uh, let's take another game as an example. So we have the mouse sports played after this, right? And they won 2-0. So let's say you could get like about two times the money on uh, mouse sports, which both, both me and Mika thought were, was pretty good. Uh, now they did win 2-0. But let's say like this. If the odds for mouse sports, if you bet on 1.1, you know, of course nobody offers that. But if you did, could you really honestly afterwards say, oh, this was a great bet because yeah. I won? Of course it's not. It's a fucking terrible yeah. bet. But you still won. And that's the hard part with betting. Because you can't really ever confirm 100%. You can't 100% almost ever say this bet was great. I mean, it happens, but it happens very rarely. Because the odds are very close to the truth. And we are fighting against finding an edge that is usually a few percent. You know, we are trying to maybe reach an ROI of 5%, 10%. You know, 10% would be amazing, right, in the long run. So we are finding really small edges, meaning you you can almost never honestly say that a bet was, like, amazingly wrong. Because it very, very rarely is. I've seen a few examples in the past year, maybe, that I can actually back up with some kind of logic that it was, like, exceptional value. Or a live bet <clears throat> might happen every now and then. They get it really wrong. But... Odds before games are usually very, very close to the truth, and of yeah. course, there's 
there's edges to be found, but they are hard to find. And also they are very hard to confirm. They is very hard to just put it out there. Like this was a great bet. This was a bad bet because usually it's very, very close either way. Yeah. And usually yeah. you have to find them way ahead of the game. You have to find it days before the game happens because the closer you get the, the better the odds will be. Definitely. Or not better, but closer to reality. Yeah, but, like, be, be, better for for operator. The operator. Yeah, uh, it's a good thing to mention is that um, if we go, so Jan, it's kind of safe to say that you used to make money with esports betting, right? Well, sure, but I would also really want to add something there that that was before actual esports betting, you know, was a big thing and operators knew what they were doing. So yeah, yeah, but at that so point, it was very exactly, different. But that's the point what I wanted, which I wanted to make because you started esports betting before esports betting was a thing. So we're saying what 15 years ago? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't have a, I, I don't keep a diary, so I don't really know exactly here. But no, I'm, I'm pretty just sure ish. I. Yeah, I yeah, know. I'm I'm pretty sure I put in like some of my first esports bets around 2000 and. Seven, two thousand eight, at least. Okay, so, so over ten years. Like twelve, thirteen in. years. Well, yeah. uh, the same second you basically could, I was doing it. So yeah, and at the time, um, it's safe to say that the operators had absolutely no fucking clue on what they were doing, and if you were following esports, you could pretty much print cash with the betting. Well, you could, but you also had limitations. So yeah. that was basically the only obstacle at the time if you knew a lot about esports if you followed it a lot was that you could not bet enough on games first of all and if you did exceptionally well you would get limited so there was a, there was a lot of obstacles to make a lot of money so i don't want to call it printing money but uh, definitely there was a lot of opportunities and now because esports has grown rapidly and massively over the the last 10 years um, the edge is now on the house instead of the better, because now the operators have a lot better clue on on what they're doing, and it's a a, a lot. It's it's not often when you find those massive uh, the, those odds that are absolutely all all over the place. Like in a sense that for whatever reason, let's say that Fnatic would be playing with um, with two stand-ins versus some tier 2 team and when like and that the operators wouldn't have known that they have the stand-ins so the 10 odds underdog we would become the favorite these these kind of odds and bets doesn't happen anymore because the well, operators are following it a, a lot more closely i wanted to give an example because i think like one of the absolute best bets we have tweeted about ever on our betting twitter um uh, is uh, Liquid playing OG in uh, We Play, was it? Yeah, We Play the same uh, charity tournament. So uh, this game, OG was a massive favorite. Then we got to know that they are going to play with two stand-ins a couple of days before the game, I think, or one day before. And the odds didn't change. On most board books, the odds stayed the same for about 24 hours uh, from where we found the odds and we tweeted it out. And actually, I can't remember. Let me check, actually, because this was absolutely <laughs> I, an amazing bet. I, I remember. I think you tweeted about it, too, on the betting account. Yeah, yeah we did. I, we did. I, I'll, I, I'll I, check the spreadsheet. I, 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 I took the bet, I, I remember, uh, and I, I, I made a good 100 euros out of it. Because they were playing with Seb and... Who was the other one? So let's see. Uh, actually, I can't remember. Uh, but mid, but I mid, have it. mid one and Thompson went there. So it was Seb and and someone else, and OG wasn't even playing properly. So OG took it as a, a, a as fun, and Liquid were actually playing the game yep. too old, <laughs> and Liquid's odds were like two point five or something. So the thing is this. Uh, what I want to mention as well is that we got 3.3 times the money on Liquid to win against an OG with two stand-ins. And it's quite obvious that when OG are in that state, they don't even take it like, you know, 100% serious. Anyway, it's a charity tournament. And from my point of view, Liquid has been somewhat struggling and they really want to probably, you know, get the practice in, do whatever, because the new ESL LA is probably coming up. 
And it was quite clear that with those circumstances, Liquid should be a favorite. Uh, no, maybe not a huge one. I'm not saying they should be like a 1.4 favorite here, but I'm saying they should probably be like 1.6, 1.7. We got 3.3, but I also know through other sources that you could have gotten up to four and a half times the money uh, a few hours before we tweeted about it. Uh, so we could have been faster on the ball as well, but 3.3 is still amazing. Uh, I think before the game started, the odds were down to about 1.5, 1.6 on Liquid. So this is a case where you find an amazing, like this is amazing odds. This is where you print money. But the thing is this, this doesn't happen a lot. And if you want to take gambling or betting seriously, you can't wait for these odds. I mean, we can make an amazing bet in Twitter with 200% ROI. I'm sure of that. If we have one bet a month, you know, but you're not going to make money in the long run in a consistent way by doing that. So you have to find small edges to, you know, feed into your, basically your turnover, right? You need to bet quite a lot to win, you know, a decent amount, right? So you really have to find these small edges most of the time instead of only betting on the really, really good odds like this one, because you can't really do that because you can't sustain your betting. Of course, if you're not taking betting as a very, very serious thing, if you do it only for, you know, very much like for as a fun thing, you can go for these super good odds every now and then. Of course you can, but uh, I just want to mention it because it's so, it's so rare, but when it happens, it's very clear. Like this is a very clear, amazing bet that we managed to find that time. Yeah, um, and then moving uh, on a little bit uh, from this discussion, um, I want to, because now we're talking a lot about odds and, and, and what, what is a great bet and so on. Um, in, in your kind of head, when you, when you start looking at an operator where to bet on, um, I, I'm going to throw a few things that I usually look at and then you can kind of open up a little bit more and, and, and give your insight. But for me, the things that I'm looking at is, is first of all, the market selection. So how much uh, markets they offer. Um, obviously, a lot of operators don't still, uh, well, now at the moment they're taking eSports seriously because there's nothing else to bet on. But usually the selections are just map winner or series winner or something like that. So I want to find a, a vast selection. So we have player-based betting opportunities. So uh, how many kills does player X get in a game and over and under lies and these kind of things. Um, then uh, the next thing I look at are the licenses. I, I want to know which license an, an operator is operating on. Obviously, if an operator do, does not have a license, stay the fuck away from it. That's the one of the most important things. If, if an operator does not have a license, then you should never use that operator. Um, For sure. the, li the license that I, I like the most is MGA, uh, obviously it's, it's in EU, so uh, when you are betting on, on an uh, MGA licensed operator, it means that your winnings are tax-free. Um, the Estonian license does that too. Um, UK Gambling Commission is, is also a good license because in UK the regulations are really tight. So if an operator has UK Gambling Commission license, it's a good thing. Then obviously for Sweden, uh, if you are from Sweden, you want to bet on operators that have spell inspection license because it means that they are following the regulations of Sweden. And then Sorry, uh, I'm gonna take a call, boys. Sorry. Okay. And then uh, the the third um, part for me is is customer support and payment options. So I want to be sure that um, the operator has good ways to contact them so that they have a live chat, preferably 24-7. If not 24-7, then at least like 16 hours a day, so from 8 a.m. to midnight or something like that. And then about the payment options, um, you want to see a good variety of payment options. So if an operator is only offering uh, Visa and MasterCard and then PaySafe card, and then someone else has Visa, Master, three different e-wallets and, and few other options too, uh, it's obviously a good sign. Um, there are some operators who use this kind of pay and play thing where you log in with your banking details or bank ID, so to speak, and those you, you go via Trustly. And those are exceptions because they can only offer one payment option because Trustly is the only one you can work in the pay and play thing because when, with pay and play operators, you don't make uh, an account at all, but instead 
um, you just lock in with your banking details, so it's tied to your identity, uh, mm -hmm. and it's completely safe, of course. That's good to mention. So, uh, but those are the things that I start looking at uh, when I'm choosing an operator. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm pretty sure Noah was away for a minute or two, but uh, we we obviously have talked about this before, and uh, I clearly agree. Uh, I mean, I think we talk quite a lot about um, operators. It's good if they have a lot of games, of course, but most people are, I would say, in most cases, I would at least assume that most people are interested in one, maybe two, maybe three sometimes, right? So. It doesn't really matter to me if I'm interested as I am in CSGO and Dota 2. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me if they have Hearthstone, Rainbow Six, or World of Tanks, right? Like, I just try to find the best website or the best sports books I can for the games I'm interested in. But the selection is definitely, I think, something that I value very, very highly because, especially, I have an example. So I sent two links in. Um, yeah. Discord, so we have one from Betway on this is a Dota 2 game that's being played today. So this is uh, just to show, for an example, on Betway, their selections are not very big on this game. Uh, it's still or still bigger than some I've seen, but they have basically match winner, they have some handicap, over, under maps, correct score, team to win at least one map. Like, that's it. Uh, then you can see later when Mika has gone through it, uh, on Pinnacle, which is one of the sites that offered the biggest selection. Uh, now I think there's other downsides to Pinnacle, but I really value this super highly that you have. So on this game, you have about 50 selections, uh, which sounds a little bit more than it actually is because it's kind of the same thing many, many times, right? But there's still a lot more. You can play on individual maps, you can play on kills, and you also, the important part, if you, Mika, can open one of, for an example, there's a map one total, you can bet on several different lines. Almost every other operator gives you one line. For an example, on Bet365 or Bet, well, Betway is not a good example now, but many other sites anyway, uh, they offer you one line. So this game would probably have one line that is like over 42.5 kills or under. And that's it. But on Pinnacle, you always get this. So you get, you can bet even on over 28.5 or under 63. I mean, I think that's super good to have the option of going up and down in the lines. And on top of that, a lot of times they offer player individual bets like you talked about, Temu, and uh, they don't own this game, unfortunately. But uh, I think that's interesting. It's something that I like to spend time on to research because I definitely feel like most operators are quite on point when it comes to, you know, putting the odds on who's going to win the game, because that's the most basic bet you can put on a game, right? And that's where they have very good statistics. They know what the line should be. But when it comes to these other things, I really feel like they can be off sometimes. So that's something I can find where I can find an edge. For an example, the player bets that are kind of new, not many offer them. Uh, or these kill lines that still some sites are starting to offer, but uh, especially when you go like the low, if you have two top teams that usually are very aggressive in Dota 2, let's say the possibility of them going under 28 kills in a game is almost, it's basically zero uh, if they are closely matched and they're both aggressive, but the operator or Pinnacle in this case, I don't think they really take that into account that much because this is probably a computer you know, model that puts this up basically. And sometimes uh, you can find interesting stuff there. So now I have talked for <laughs> a long time about this, but I hope I just want to make it very clear how how big of a difference there can be and how, how much more you can do than just bet on winners of games. Because I think even though, of course, we bet a lot or on our betting tips, we have a lot of winners of games. I think those markets are usually the hardest ones to find value in. So I really highly value these sites or sports books that offer way more. And you can actually, like, it's just fun for me to research more than just who's going to win the game, right? Yeah, yeah but definitely. Then, yeah, but, but you, besides you really... that, I obviously just agree with everything else, you know, security, being able to trust where you're playing and so on. Of course, th those things are more important than anything. I don't care if you have the, you know, a million lines per game, so, you know, the best selection ever, if I can't trust my to get my money, of course, then 
you know that's always priority number one yeah the bottom line is that the the uh, when you go to these kinds of of markets where you where you want to take like player uh player specific pets or or map specific pets you need to you, you need to do your research a little bit deeper you have to know um, some some things about these teams and and meta and and, and some statistics from their uh, uh, previous games so so it is more work for you but it also gives you possibility to get way better odds than just being a winner I think so, and it's also quite rewarding when yeah. you, if, you know, if you do good research and you actually start winning, it's very rewarding to feel, you know, like you've done good work behind it. Uh, I think that's super cool. For an example, yeah. I think Dota 2 is a great example because a lot of times I've seen this and we tweeted about some of these as well, where, for an example, a team, uh, in this case it was Secret, uh, they had their mid player, Nisha, who was... His line was something like 10.5 kills a game. And then they have Matumba Man, who traditionally has played very many heroes in Dota 2 that don't get that many kills. Uh, and his line was 7.5 instead of 10.5. And I was looking through the past something like 30, 40 games, and Matumba Man is averaging higher kills than Nisha. He most of the time plays the hero that gets the kills for the team. They also have a lot of players who give up those kills, like Sai, like Japs or Puffy. They don't take the kills from their carries. They really give them their carries their kills if they can. And I think those bets were amazing. Uh, like, straight up, I think those odds were way too good. Uh, and the line was set at 7.5. It should have been probably 9.5 or 10.5 or Nisha and Matumbaman switched. So that was definitely a case where I think Pinnacle didn't know what they were doing, honestly. Maybe they were going on like historical data or something because in this team, Matumba Man gets a lot of kills. You know, that's just one example, but it's interesting when you start looking into it. Yeah, and, and these are very interesting things to research. I, I actually enjoy researching things like that, and that is a reason I want to watch as many games as I can because that uh, is, makes my research easier because I have... Uh, uh, the knowledge from watching the games and I don't have to watch that many statistics but uh, this is something I love uh, in esports and esports betting is is to find these kinds of, of uh, markets and things and, and odds and, and research these things that that is something I'm, I'm very passionate about yeah I think it's super cool it's actually something I really enjoy much because I've been betting on uh, traditional sports as well in the past and uh, as much as I did enjoy that, that was definitely different. Like you couldn't do as much research and as much background work for, let's say, football or ice hockey. I felt compared to esports. Actually, I it, it's it, it's different, but um, I don't know. I really enjoy esports betting from that angle. Yeah. Um. Then uh, let's start talking a little bit about the um, balance management and and having a budget for betting and and how important that is is um because obviously um there are it's quite easy to kind of get caught up and and go over your own budget so how do would you advise people to approach betting and and what kind of budget um would you recommend and and, and choosing bet sizes and and whatnot well, so this is actually, I feel like this is a topic that it's, uh, it's usually very hard to get somebody who's new in betting to understand the importance of this, even though you, <laughs> as much as you try to tell them, it's really hard to understand how volatile betting is. And the word volatile is something I think is super important because let's say like this, a lot of people that i know personally I don't, i'm not saying this is uh, like a universal standard but i think it's quite normal to be betting uh, let's say 10 percent of what you have in your bankroll or more uh, per game but the truth is this if you keep on doing that it doesn't matter if you're the best and i'm talking the best better in the world you will go broke because the the harsh reality is as much as the same thing let's say now i don't want to compare betting to 
roulette or blackjack or something. But if you do that in those games, which are close to 50-50 games, you will lose all your money because you will hit a bad stretch where you lose a lot of bets in a row. The same is true for betting. And this goes hand in hand with what we talked about before, that sometimes, you know, just because a bet is good, it doesn't mean you'll win. And the truth is that eventually you will hit those 10 games in a row where you lose or more, you know. Uh, of course, this depends a lot on what types of bets you're going for, but you will hit a bad stretch. And that's the bottom line here that you have to understand that. And normally, I think it's, you know, recommendable to use maybe 1%, 2% of whatever you have in your bankroll. And I really think people should, you know, if you start betting, put some money into the betting and keep your other money separate. So yeah. you never mix your living <clears throat> money and whatever money you need for your life with your betting bankroll. you start with a bet betting bankroll and then go from there, you know? And I really recommend like 1% is, that's what I would recommend. I just know personally, a lot of people who would be like, I don't want to bet 1% because then I can't win much, you know? <laughs> and that's not good logic here because the truth is that if you keep on betting a lot, every game, you will eventually lose it all. And that's, that, that doesn't have anything to do with your skill or your understanding or anything. That is just how math works, you know? And it's very important to realize that. I realized it the wrong way myself in the past where I thought I was the betting god and, you know, I started playing with too much. And eventually you get to that one really bad stretch of like 50 games, you lose most of them, bam, you're done. And I don't know how to emphasize it any better than that, but it's so important. And if you want to be a long-term winner, this is the most important step. You just have to control yourself and keep the bets down. But I think the first step to doing that is understanding this is a long-term thing. We're not here to make money quick because that will not basically happen anyway. We're here for long-term success. And honestly, I think a good way to approach it is to, you know, it doesn't matter if you start with $10 or if you start with $10,000. Look at the graphs. Look at the green line going up. That's the fun part. It doesn't always matter, you know, how, how big the number is. Look at your results, you know. If you can reach a consistent plus ROI, even if it's 1%, but it, let's say it's 1% for the first few months, then you get to 5%. Maybe you get to 10%. You're one of the best betters in the world. You will eventually make the big bucks too, you know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you start. If you're a consistent, good, better, and your ROI is consistently good, eventually you will be making the big bucks. But that's the only way to make the big bucks. Yeah, and I think a very good uh, uh, note here is, is I'm just going to rewind a little bit, going back to the the betting size on on that you suggest the one percent. Um, it's a very good because let's say that uh, hypothetically uh, I start betting uh, this month now and I have a um my betting budget is 100 euro per month so it's it sounds really low that i would be betting one euro per bet and that okay so if i win if i place one euro on 1.8 odds and i win it means i get 1.8 euros and that feels like nothing but then when you place a thousand bets and and you have thousand winning bets then it's actually a bigger sum of money and that also applies to where you get when you get to the losing street and let's say you lose 30 bets in a row if you are consistent with your betting size you lost 30 euros but if you start like oh but i think this is a good bet i've been losing a lot lately so i'm gonna boost my bet to 10 percent and instead of instead of going down 30 euros you end up going down 300 euros which means that you're emptying Every, all the good work you've done beforehand, and you're just dropping a pile of diarrhea on top of it. And that means you completely fucked yourself. Yeah. Oh, but that's the thing, right? It's really, really hard or really easy to fall into the trap. Feeling like I've been doing so bad lately, I'm so unlucky, now I want to get my money back. But I think this is the point. Like, this is the main point of really keeping your bets small starting out that way because then you don't get angry you don't get too emotional for losing that one euro but if you're going all in or from the beginning with i don't know it's just, the numbers are different for everybody but then you will be more emotional as well so looking at it as a long-term project starting with small bets that's a good way as well to keep your self-control 
but also on top of that you really have to understand that you know if you want to make it in this uh, well this field basically uh it's tough but the way to grow is exponential in the beginning let's say you put in a hundred bets a month or a few hundred i would say you know if you're very very serious better you probably should be uh you will be with the first few months let's say you make you know 50 euros that's great later down the line you will start be making 100 then 200 then it goes quicker and quicker because it's exponential growth your bets get bigger your bankroll gets bigger eventually if you're really good you can make you know 100 euro 200 euro bets and that's obviously the goal but you have to grow but you have to realize that the growth is slow in the beginning but it's quite fast when you actually get along the way um interesting question about this so <clears throat> let's say that we start with 100 euros and and we become a a winning better and and at what point do you suggest that you adjust your bet sides upwards so if you start with 100 when your bankroll is, is 150 or 200 or 300 when would you when would you take that 1% you started with so if you start with 1 euro when will you switch your the 1 percentage to your current bankroll well uh, as i see it and this is maybe not the easiest way to do it or anything but i see it as you do it all the time okay uh, if you have 100 you bet 1 if you have 120 you, you bet 1.2 you know so you adjust it every single time depending on your bankroll but obviously this gets a little bit complex and you don't you know you, you can keep it simple and bet one per game and then maybe when you reach 150 you start betting 1.5 so when basically like so basically every time you get for yourself yeah yeah so let's say that every time you you are able to kind of um build your bankroll like plus 50 percent then you adjust so when you get from 100 to 150 then you adjust your one percent from one euro to 150. I mean, and then is, when I you think get to 200 easy. you go to two yeah so basically every 50 percent you kind of adjust it and that way because event like let's say that you start with 100 and you lose the first 20 and you're you have 80, 80 euros left i'm not so it still makes sense to bet the the one instead mm -hmm. of 1.8 yeah uh, so I also want to add, of course, uh, personally, and this is, you know, this is really up to anybody. There's a lot of different ways to bet, and there's a lot of systems, and there's a lot of systems that people suggest that doesn't work as well. But I really think uh, uh, you should really, you know, if if we are betting on something that is 1.2 odds that we think is amazing, and we have a hundred times the money bet that we think is amazing, I don't think we should bet one euro on both of them, right? I, I really think we have to adjust depending on how low or how big the odds are as well, because odds are directly the same as probability. So if we have a high probability odds, meaning 1.1 to 1.4 or so, I think we should raise up our bet size. If we go over three times, whatever, or two, like this is something you can definitely do, you know, for every single bet uh, to adjust your bet size. But I usually like to keep it very simple. For example, our betting tips and our betting spreadsheets basically works from the fundamental that if a bet is from 1 to 1.5, we bet 3, which is 3%, which is quite high. Then if it's from 1.5 or 1.6 to about 2.2, we bet 2. And then if it's over that, we bet 1, you know? So I'm, I'm just doing it to make it very simple for myself. I don't have to calculate every single bet, but you could do it with a formula as well that basically calculates exactly, depending on the odds, we bet this much, right? So that's really up to each and every one how you do it. Just make sure you don't <laughs> don't go crazy. For example, if something is 1.01, .01, I don't recommend you to go 50% of your bankroll, right? So keep yourself to some kind of limits, of course. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the limit, I, I, limit is, the, is the hard thing, I think, because my, my friends has been starting to bet on esports uh, uh actually with the corona thing they they have to be in, like they ha they want something to do in the home and, they, and they've started to to bet on esports and and they uh, uh, of course i've been telling them what what you should do and what you shouldn't do and and they are mainly pretty reasonable guys and and they are doing as it should but then i get once in a while uh, a message middle of the night that Hey, I want this very, very good, uh, good odds, and I, I, I placed thirty percent of my like betting budget in there. 
are you stupid? Uh, like, like, you you just ruined like two months of work uh, if you if you do that do it like that. Like, like even if you find something very good, you have to keep your limits because it's so easy to fall in the trap and 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 just like. Let your emotions take take uh, a hold of you and 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 bet with your emotions and and that's actually something uh, I've seen so many people struggle. That's definitely true, and I will be the first one to admit that I'm you know I'm 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 guilty as well. Yeah, yeah, me <laughs> too. There, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, it, sometimes it's hard because you you know you want to make money quicker basically, but mm. like I really. The older I got it, the more I understood that I have to look at this as a long-term thing. Yeah. There is no such thing as, yes, of course you can make a quick buck. You can make, you know, uh, hundreds, uh, you can make thousands of euros, if you're lucky, really quickly. But the same is true for a lot of things that I find really stupid, like going to the casino and playing roulette. You can make a lot of money quickly there too. But the truth is, most of the time you will lose your money, and the, that's just how it goes. Same is just true for betting. If you... Push your limits. If you like, I can guarantee you. If you make a mathematic model about this, if, where you bet 10% of your bankroll every single bet, eventually you will go broke. And it doesn't matter how you bet. It doesn't matter how good you bet. It do, nothing matters because yep. the truth is you will go broke, and that's it. So uh, yeah, limits are tough, and I think it's there's no really right or wrong answer either because there's a lot of different ways to do it i just think you should adjust your bet size but keep it pretty close to one percent uh i like the one percent is no golden rule i think it's totally fine sometimes to bet three percent on you know a low odds that you find you know being very very good i think it's fine to bet maybe even four or five you know on a very low odds but something that you see as super solid uh, I'm not saying that's the end of the world, as long as you do that and then you move back to your normal, you know, uh, and the same is true. For an example, we talked earlier about the Liquid OG game where we got 3.3 times the money. Normally, I would go 1% or less on a 3.3 bet, but I knew this bet is not supposed to be 3.3. It's supposed to be like 1.6. So we went bigger on that because we should. If, if we know the probability is actually way, way bigger than the 3.3 odds that are offered and we can actually like we can confirm that you know because it's just true then i think it's totally fine to go bigger but you can't fool yourself either you know <laughs> don't fool yourself thinking i know this is a good bet so i will go bigger there there really needs to be solid reasoning behind that in that yeah, case definitely and of course like 30 percent is never reasonable uh, just to <laughs> confirm <laughs> yeah um yeah it's, I think there there are so many different kind of aspects to this that are very interesting. And, and I think people who like math, uh, betting is really good because at the end of the day, it's just math, right? Well, to a certain extent, yes. Uh, of course, finding and understanding what's good odds and so on is not really that math based uh, in itself, but the rest of it really is. And uh, it's, it's, this is the thing, right? I, I don't know how to push this point through enough, but for an example, poker players, they also struggle a lot with luck, you know, bad luck and good luck. So you really need to have a quite a big bankroll in poker as well, because you will have bad stretches of being unlucky, even though you're the favorite. And that's really where everything lies. If we want to be long-term successful with betting, we need to be over you know the limit right we need to be over 100 percent roi that just means that we need to have a small edge in most of the bets we place but with with that said even if let's say like this if we bet on something that's 60 percent we flip a coin that for some reason lands 60 percent of the time on one side of course it's a fucking amazing bet for us if we can get double the money but our chances are 60 percent as one example but if we bet too high, we will lose our money eventually because we will hit a bad stretch once again. You know, 60-40 will happen. The 40% uh, underdog will win 10, 20, maybe 30 times in a row. It will happen. Mm. And that's just how it goes. It's kind of the same to the logic that we talked about with the OG winning that Temu made money on. And I, I'm not saying it was a bad bet. I think it was totally fair and maybe it was even a good bet. Uh, but the reality is that 
it's not like OG is gonna win every time. They are probably gonna win about one in a one in three, maybe even half. You know, if uh, let's say their bet is amazing. So, yeah, yeah, and I, I like the me betting on OG. Um, in in not in any way would it be like a. It might actually be a really bad bet, but it's. Um, well, you know me. Uh, I have my gut feelings, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> So basically, I actually, it's a good thing to break down the OG thing, right? So the way I looked at it is that uh, I've really, really enjoyed the Counter-Strike that OG is playing. I've seen that in this tournament, in this past two weeks, they've been able to challenge the best in the world. Um, and based on that, I had, I thought OG has a good chance to win. But it does not mean that my bet was smart. It my bet was still actually stupid because the odds were not high enough. So what odds even, did you get? Actually, uh, it was three point three, if I remember correctly. I I think that's reasonable. Like I yeah, like I think I said that when we talked about it as well. I think that's reasonable, and maybe the line should be like three actually. But the thing is this, like, and I want to compare this uh, to something else. Uh, so let's say, because we, we believe in OG here, so the thing is, if we would have looked at this, and I don't want to, like, take this out of context or anything, but if we look at their past games, they were probably against FaZe, Vitality, Mouseports, Navi before this game. They were probably about a three times underdog there as well in all of those games, I, I believe. Uh, that should be about correct. I can't really imagine it being any different. Uh, and they lost three out of four, you know, and m most of those were close, but the odds actually worked out to be probably pretty correct. If you look at it, they, they did win one out of four and now they have won two out of five. And in all of those games, they have been a three times the money underdog. So all in all, that actually works out to be quite true. And I really don't like looking at five games and saying, this is the truth. Uh, you know, that that's not how it works, but, um, it still kind of proves a point uh, to some certain extent. Yeah. Um, with that said, uh, I think if we continue much more of this, we're going to start circle jerking a little bit. I think we already um, did, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, I like the fact that like we're talking about this and I, I'm more than happy to talk about this more in the future too, because yeah, there's lots of talk about. yeah, and, and and especially at the moment because a lot of people um, are starting to look into esports betting, especially people who make their living out of betting and and who have nothing to bet on except esports and uh, the Belarus uh, sports leagues because Lukashenko just doesn't give a fuck. Um, so <laughs> yes, um. All in all, we went over quite a lot of things again. It's it's been an hour already, and I d I'm not sure if it makes sense to to continue on this more at this point. I think it's better to kind of let it sink in and then um, uh, continue on this topic on another day with fresh minds. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I I think we went through quite a lot of important and good things, but I mean, obviously, the, the, there's a million things to discuss when it comes to betting. I think you can go really deep into each subject uh, individually but i think uh, the most important thing for us is that if anybody has any questions we are available to answer them anywhere really like obviously in yeah. chat on twitch or on twitter we are available pretty much all the time and we're more than happy to discuss it uh, especially me i probably could talk myself to death uh, about betting because it's really an interesting thing so yeah, I, I linked our betting Twitter account to the chat. Um, we are actually giving out free esports betting dips. Uh, if not daily, then weekly. Um, there is always an explanation behind it why why we are uh, offer uh, why we are linking the tweet, uh, the bet, uh, what's the kind of the story behind it, and, and this kind of stuff. And then in the near future, we're gonna have uh, guides for, uh, like written guides for esports betting on our websites on esportsvikings.com um, and uh, all these kind of things and, and we're just basically uh, trying to make sure that 
people who are interested in esports betting have the uh, the content and and the needs to start doing it in in a responsible way um, because betting can be and it, it can be a very fun hobby and it can end up being a quite a fruitful uh, hobby in terms of of cash but it only can be that if it's done correctly so yeah. if if you're not doing it properly you shouldn't do it at all because you're just going to end up losing money for sure uh i think uh, actually are speaking about our betting twitter so all of the betting tips that we put out there we also have you know saved ourselves we are trying to find a way to share that but uh, as for now we have it up we have posted sometimes about our you know total results since we started which is probably at this point about two months ago we have put in 102 bets and i think it's interesting to just mention like oh this is a very small sample size but we are up about 10 percent or so or or why it's about 10 percent if i remember correctly but the interesting thing that is that even during this time it's just 100 bets but we had a stretch of uh, i think it's about 20 bets or so where we did lose money you know we lost quite significantly over 20 bets i think we had something like eight or nine bets in a row that we lost and it's really important to me because i'm well i'm the main guy i put out most of the bets for now and i think it's really important to highlight and be transparent that yes we lose a lot as well the main yeah. point is that we try to make money in the long run because that's how it works and i did have a guy on twitter who <laughs> told me like good call or something when we had a bet lose and you know that's just life you can't win every bet that's not how it works sometimes you will lose 10 in a row i understand i sound like you know i'm expecting to lose or not even trying here but that's just a harsh reality as long as you make money in the long run it's all good and uh, sometimes the bad stretch hits and we even had one of those during these hundred bets and hundred bets is really nothing when it comes to the big picture but uh, this just shows uh, how it works. We are winners this far, but we still had a very long time where we didn't win any money. You know, over those 20, 30 bets, we didn't make a, we didn't make a fucking dime. <laughs> and, uh, but the truth is that over 100 bets we did. So that's the important part. I just yeah. want to highlight it that we really don't hide when we lose. If anything, I think it's more important to us. I'm not saying we have done this far. But I really want in, in the future that maybe we should highlight more when we lose than when we win because, you know, a losing bet, as I said, can still be a very good one. And that's important to highlight sometimes that, you know, most most what I see out there is bragging about wins. I really want to be transparent with our losses and explain why we bet on them and why we maybe can still justify that it was a good bet, even though we lost as much as we can justify, you know, winning bets being good we should be able to justify losing bets being good i think yeah. that makes sense yeah. Yeah. and with that said i think it's time to start saying um goodbye for today uh, it's been a very good hour of talking and i hope someone got something out of it obviously this vod will also be uploaded to youtube in the upcoming days so people can go back to it um, uh, thank I, you. I, I have only one yeah. thing to say. I, I want uh, people to go and check out the Home Sweet Home Cup. Uh, we have daily uh, previews and, and result articles in our website. So it, it started yesterday and it's going to be uh, six days a week uh, for the next eight weeks. So, so it's going to be something big and something you should check out. So. We have everything, uh, every info you need about the tournament and the results and previews and some tips uh, for betting in our site. So go check it out. This yes. will definitely be a lot of CSGO for the upcoming almost two months or more. So yeah. we will also try to find a lot of things. We are on the betting train here. We will obviously try to find bets from this tournament. And I actually think this is a tournament you really can find good bets if you have some good information because these teams are definitely not you know astralis fnatic og level yeah. and usually that's where you can actually make quite a good buck and uh, but with that said it's harder because the information is more limited but we will do our best uh, and we own the tweet when we feel it's good we don't tweet just to put content out there we really try to value the good bets so yeah we, we don't we'll we see. don't have to put any tips there we, we are not like like that we have to do it daily or if, if there is none 
good uh, bets to go we don't uh, publish it uh. yeah that's the most important part i don't want to sit there and recommend something that i don't feel is good just to produce something honestly i and this sounds wrong maybe this this sounds like the worst excuse ever but i really think that a day of no tweets on our betting twitter is kind of a good sign because that just means okay today there was nothing that we found good enough you know it's not that we don't work on it it's just we don't want to recommend bad things or something we are uncertain about we really try yeah. to get the best ones out there yes so, yeah. um with that said Thank you very much, uh, Mika, Janne, as always. Thank you, Janne, especially. Uh, it's it's fantastic to have you in uh, and your insight on betting. It's really helpful, not just for the viewers, but also for us. Yeah, um, So we can learn a lot. And well, I with that so. said... I, I feel like sometimes I just keep on talking in circles, but I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said we will be back tomorrow and we will continue on this uh, well not probably on this but we will continue talking about esports um so come back tomorrow for more esports to come yeah. thank you for watching and see you later see you. alligator see you